So many people confuse copywriting with copywriting. Ironically, this job is about finding the right words, but the job title probably could have been chosen better. If you're interested in the world of copywriting, take some time to learn the difference between these two jobs. Copywriting, with a W, is the act of writing text for the purpose of advertising or other forms of marketing. The product, which is called copy, is written content that aims to increase brand awareness and ultimately persuade a person or a group of people to take a particular action. It's usually buying something. Now, the other kind of copywriting, with an R, is the exclusive rights to make copies, license, and otherwise exploit a literary, musical, or artistic work, whether that be printed, audio, or video form. Now, these are two very different jobs, and now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about copywriting with a W, the act of writing text for the purpose of advertising or other forms of marketing. Now, the world of copywriting is more exciting than you might think. You might be asking, why, Theodore? Writing copy allows you to create an automated money-generating machine that does the heavy lifting for you. Copy, once it's written, is placed strategically online. It's basically an online salesperson, and it works 24-7, 365 days a year. If you found this video, you may want to become a copywriter. Now I'm going to try to convince you why to choose a career in copywriting. Every high quality website you've ever visited, every Facebook ad you've ever seen, every print advertisement ever has been written by a copywriter, whether they knew it or not. Copywriting is a multi-billion dollar industry. Copywriters find plenty of ongoing work and relatively little competition nowadays. And what happens when there's a huge demand for copywriters, but little supply? You've got it, the price goes up. Copywriters can easily raise their rates because their services are so necessary to a business's success. A high-quality copywriter can easily rake in six figures a year while being their own boss, choosing their own clients, and living what we call the digital nomad lifestyle. So if you want to live the common dream of spending your weekday mornings on a beach somewhere in Bali or having coffee in Buenos Aires, maybe you just want to move from place to place every few months and have the freedom of making your own schedule at home, you might want to consider a career in copywriting. Because think about it, how many career paths do you know that allow people to have such freedom and financial stability? Copywriting is a unique and accessible career, and it requires little to no money to start your own business as a copywriter. When you dive deeper, you will discover that a good copy on a website can easily double, triple, or even quadruple a business's sales because of the insane compound effect of something called conversion optimization. So if you can offer this product, this service to a business, you can double, triple, or quadruple your rates within months of becoming a better copywriter. So think about an online business that gets around a thousand unique visitors a month. Only a small percentage of these people will actually buy something. For example, just for the sake of this example, let's say that 1% of visitors actually make a purchase. Now, if you improve the copy of a website and send a more compelling and persuasive message, you could easily raise the percentage of buyers to 2%. Now, 1% improvement doesn't seem like much, does it? What's the big deal? It's just 1%. In essence, you are doubling your sales, only by changing some of the words on your website. So let's go further. What if your copy leads to an increase in people subscribing to your email list, clicking on your ad, or sharing your blog post? You'll find more customers making their way down the funnel. What first appears to be small gains will start to have an exponential effect. You'll see more subscribers, more likes, more shares, and eventually, more paying customers. All of these individual increases really add to your bottom line. Now you might be saying, this all sounds nice, but I'm not an expert writer and I suck at writing. Well, the best thing about copywriting is that you don't have to be a literary genius to write effective copy. In fact, you don't even have to have perfect grammar to be a great copywriter. At the end of the day, if you manage to hook people emotionally, they don't really care about some random typos here or there on your website. This is the crux of the whole equation. The sole purpose of your copy is to stir up emotion and encourage people to take action. Effective persuasion is more than just boring facts, true but useless stats, or clever rational arguments. In order to truly persuade someone, you have to connect with their pains, their fears, their hopes, and their dreams. Your readers need to feel understood, as if you were talking directly to them. Copywriting is both the art and science of using extremely powerful tools that will move people to take your desired action. Making a six-figure salary is just an added bonus. So, let's get started. This training will give you everything you need to know to have a rock-solid foundation in copywriting, but that's not all. You'll also learn how to leverage this awesome power in every area of your life, growing your business, charming the girl that you like, and even persuading children to eat those dang vegetables. All of these feats require an ability to empathize, persuade, and communicate. And if you master all of these skills, you'll become a much better and a more profitable copywriter.
So first off, let's talk about something called product and an audience match. Understanding and catering to a specific audience will save you time and give you insight into creating better copy. Marketers, influencers, and even politicians know the benefit of understanding their audience. So here's an example that has nothing to do with copywriting. You're on the hunt for a new t-shirt, so you decide you need to start window shopping. A guy on the street tries to sell you some shoes though, but you don't want shoes, you want a t-shirt. You ignore the guy on the street and continue window shopping. Now this seems like a little simple example, but it speaks to the fundamental part of creating and selling any product. Readers and buyers have specific problems, questions, and desires. That's why they shell out money in the first place. They want to invest in a product that will solve their problems, whether that be an answer to a question or to satisfy their desires. Think of your copy as a product. If you write copy about a pair of shoes for a reader who is looking for a t-shirt, you'll get nowhere. But if you can write copy about a t-shirt, readers will pay attention. So here's another example from a legendary copywriter, Gary C. Halbert. He wrote the book The Boron Letters, which is in itself a great book. So a great marketer asks a crowd, if you wanted to sell a whole bunch of hot dogs, what would you do? Some people in the crowd reply by saying they would increase their advertising budget. Others reply that they would improve the hot dog recipe, making their hot dogs the best in the world. And a few said they would set up a franchise. The great marketer had a much better answer. He said, go and find a hungry crowd. And there you have it. The easiest place to sell hot dogs is on a beach or a stadium crowd. You go where people that are hungry for hot dogs are. This is the idea of a product and an audience match. You have to make sure you have this down first. Next, let me explain the difference between a benefit and a feature. Because if you want to become an excellent copywriter, you'll have to learn the difference between features and benefits. And at first glance, they sound like the same thing. What makes a feature more persuasive than a benefit, or vice versa? Well, the answer is that your audience is like a bag of potatoes. I know what you're thinking. What the heck do you mean by that? We live in a world of never-ending distractions. Notifications on our phones, shows on TVs, and news alerts on our computer are constantly pulling that attention out of us. We have lost our attention span. You have but two or three seconds to get a reader's attention with your headline or an email subject. But once you hook them in, you have to continue to keep their focus with an emotional story. Then, when you finally introduce that product or your state your offer, you can still lose your reader's attention. The only way to keep them interested is to speak to their desires and offer mouth-watering benefits. Everyone wants to know what's in it for me, whether they're buying a product, working at a company, or voting for the next president. Highlighting the cool features of your product and describing the specifics of your brand won't make people care more. People, including you and I, are egotistical. Us as humans, we are egotistical. We want to gain something out of every interaction, especially while we're browsing online. Statistics, numbers, and a boring list of features doesn't do anything for us. You have to show your readers these features, how they can benefit their everyday lives. This means understanding a reader's perspective, touching on a personal pain that they have, and catering to their hopes and dreams. Let me give you a little example. Nobody wakes up in the morning excited about all the gadgets and features within their coffee machine. They wake up in the morning excited about a hot, delicious cup of coffee that will perk them up and get them ready for the day. You see where I'm going with this? Let's go through a few other examples to really highlight the difference between features and benefits. Here's the first one. This computer has 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 memory. You won't experience any lag. The feature is the memory, the specs of the memory, but the benefit is the fast acting computer that will help your readers search, play, and complete tasks faster. They'll have more time, and time is money, and hopefully it'll help them run Chrome better. Here are some more. This vacuum cleaner has a 2000 kilowatt hour motor. This means you can quickly and effectively clean your whole house. This course is jam packed with over 40 hours of video and a thousand pages of content so that you have everything that you need to become a master copywriter. This phone's battery is 4,000 milliamp hours, so you get two full days of battery life. This food is low in polyunsaturated omega-6 fats, which are better for your heart than any other types of fats. So you see the difference between the features and the benefits? The feature is static, it's describing. While the benefit has more flexibility, it's describing the benefit. Benefits show the potential of what you can do with the feature. Writing about a product's benefits is necessary to produce good copy, but that doesn't mean that writing about features is completely optional. The right features can be crucial selling points of a product. You will need to understand the industry and the audience's familiarity with those features as you write and highlight different features. For example, a computer nerd will be salivating over a video card with 2800 CUDA cores, but to most people, these numbers and words mean nothing. A nutritional expert will understand the benefits of different macronutrient compositions, but people who know little about nutrition just care if the food is healthy, tasty, and it's fairly priced. 
If you're unsure of your audience or trying to reach a wide audience, take the best course of action to seamlessly list features and tell the story of their benefits in one place. Accomplishing this task is more simple than you think. I'm gonna give you a simple three-step solution. Step one, list out all the features of your product or service. List everything you can think of, of the contents, the physical dimensions, the weight, color, smell, modules, everything that's included with your product. Write them down. Step two, figure out the benefits for each one of these features. And it should be a pretty large brainstorming session. Try to find the potential uses of these features. How can they make your audience's life easier? How can they save your audience money? How can they reduce the risk of disease, death, or crazy accidents? Maybe what feelings or fuzzy emotions or satisfying sensations do all these features evoke? Also, don't forget that one feature can have multiple benefits. A car with a V8 engine can make you feel like a professional race car driver or help you get to your destination on time, which is more important to your audience. The last step is number three, combine the two. Craft several eye-popping messages that include the feature and immediately explain the benefit. Look at the examples I used earlier if you need any help. Using this method will showcase your product and give it a much higher value. The more features and benefits you can list in a single piece of copy, the more audience members you can reach. Now this guide has given you a lot of information about features and benefits. You'll never have to worry about sparking their desire again. But if you're still struggling with distinguishing features and benefits, here's another great way to figure out which is which. Keep adding the phrase, and that means, until you have a sentence that makes perfect sense. For example, this guide teaches you about the features and benefits, and that means you'll become a better copywriter, and that means you'll make more money, and that means you'll be financially independent, and that means you'll get more out of your life. You'll get more out of your life, you'll be happier, you'll feel more safe and secure. These are the core feelings you wanna to touch on with your benefits at the end of the day. But the connections between a 4,000 milliamp hour battery capacity and a happier life is not always obvious, especially because people don't know what will make them happy anyways. This is where your brainstorming and a lot of creativity come into play. Approach the product's features and benefits from several angles. Overwhelm your audience with massive value. Your audience shouldn't have to try to figure out why something is important to them. That's too much work in this age of distractions. Tell them, by providing vivid details and emotional language, what they actually want. Focus on the benefits of your product and you will see incredible results. Now this next thing is what's gonna solidify this as the copywriting guide. We're gonna talk about a little psychological trick that will earn me over six figures for the third year in a row this year. Now this little trick is so small and simple, I'm amazed it's not used more often, but I'm glad it isn't because it would annoy the crap out of me. The most exhilarating episodes of television have one thing in common a massive cliffhanger. Whether you're watching The Game of Thrones or The Simpsons or any other TV series, cliffhangers stick in your mind. A good cliffhanger will be frustrating, but you won't forget to turn on the TV next week and watch out what actually happens. We live in a world of information overload. Every headline or story is constantly competing for our attention, and our attention is surprisingly limited as I mentioned before. Research shows that our brains have a set of attention units per day. We can only use so many. They get depleted as you process new information. Have you ever felt exhausted by walking around a huge mall or a supermarket? There are so many messages and cues competing for your attention at once. Even if you don't get physically tired, you get mentally tired. And to handle the overload, your brain will quickly throw away most of the headlines that you read or the ads that you see. So how are you, a copywriter, supposed to reach your audience? Well, I've got the answer and it directly hacks the psychology of your brain. This trick is an age-old technique that's probably as old as advertising itself. It's a surprisingly potent, mind-bending super tool, something that has the power to glue the attention of your reader or your viewer to the screen. Do you see what I did there? I was teasing the heck out of this topic. Information gaps. If you've stayed with me so far, you can see why information gaps are so effective. But what exactly are information gaps and how should you use them? Information gaps are a psychological trigger that you can use intentionally and strategically to hook your prospect's attention and keep them excited about what you're saying. They work because humans have a tendency to need closure. We, as humans, do not want to leave things incomplete or open. We want to get to the bottom of things. That's why we get frustrated by cliffhangers. Information gaps also help keep us interested in role-playing games and seemingly endless amounts of quests and details. Marketers and behavioral psychologists have long realized how to exploit this innate tendency of ours so that they can sell us more products. And I'm going to give you three specific examples of how to use information gaps to get great results. Number one is curiosity. So throughout history, humans have always been curious creatures. Just look at a child and how they examine everything in the world around them. They'll explore, discover, and try everything they can, even if it involves putting it in their mouth. 
When they learn something new, they're happy or satisfied. And eventually our parents teach us to have some restraint, but this internal motivation still stays with us throughout the entirety of our lives. Probably the best place that you can leverage this power of curiosity is in headlines. If your reader is curious to learn an answer that you're posing in a headline, they're gonna click. Blogs, YouTube videos, Facebook ads, news stories, sales pages, and emails all use curiosity-based headlines. Take a look at some of these headlines and tell me you wouldn't click on them. The amazing secret of the oldest person in the world. I was this close to giving up on myself, but this tool made me get more motivated. From 1975 to 1980, one single investment appreciated approximately 450% greater than bonds, 398% higher than stocks, 175 better than houses, and 74% greater than diamonds. Believe it or not, these headlines are real and actually several decades old, yet they still work wonders. Curiosity is a timeless psychological principle. If you manage to come up with something that will spark your audience's interests, something that touches on a pain point, highlights a fear, or provides a glimpse of a better future, you know that your audience is going to read further. But before you start creating subject lines and titles that spark someone's curiosity, we have to talk about a little thing called clickbait. Clickbait is a headline or a subject that takes curiosity to the extreme. A lot of people hate it. These headlines spark a curiosity that they can't satisfy. The story behind these clickbait headlines very rarely actually have the answers or whatever it was that they were promising readers. Write headlines based on the content that you actually have on your webpage, your blog post, or whatever it is you're advertising. Try to spark curiosity, but only curiosity that you can actually satisfy. This is very important because trust will make your next information gap even more powerful and your salesmanship much more genuine. Number two is called open loops. So open loops are the equivalent of cliffhangers. You can use this technique by sparking curiosity, then going left and introducing another topic. Does it sound complicated? Well, I've done it a few times in this video and it's probably why you're still watching. So here's a few examples. I'll talk more about it in a moment, but first let me properly introduce myself. I'll tell you exactly how I did it in a minute, but first I wanna let you in on a little secret. Before I tell you what it is and what makes it so unique, let me first tell you what it isn't. Think of all those TV shows that leave you hanging simply by taking a commercial break. Open loops are very simple to write, and they work especially well in a video sales letter, regular sales letter, and even blog posts. I recommend getting very good at them. Number three is building anticipation. So professional marketers often have sophisticated anticipation email sequences that build up anticipation before a product actually launches in order to warm up prospects and create buzz around the launch. Huge companies often spend millions of dollars on these campaigns, but I'm gonna teach you how to write them absolutely free. First of all, create a simple three to five part email campaign before a launch and share valuable content with your readers. If you're still with me, good. Now, as you write these emails, add an open loop that directly teases the next email and keeps it at the top of your reader's mind. When you do send the next email, they'll be waiting for it. So adding these open loops is a lot easier than you think. All you have to do is include a little PS at the end of each email. Write something that sounds like this. P.S. In tomorrow's email, I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step guide on how to X so that you can Y. Be sure to keep an eye out for it. Adding these open loops is easier than you think. That's it. If you do this, you'll no doubt see your open rates soar and people will actually be wanting to read your next email. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the magical word in copywriting. So have you ever been or experienced this scenario? A parent is trying to tell their child to behave, whether it's to put something back in a store or to go to bed. The child goes, but why? The parent replies with, because I said so. Now the reasoning doesn't always make sense, but it is enough to convince a child to do what the parent asks of them. You might be surprised to learn that because I said so also works on adults. In fact, anything that follows because, whether it's a logical explanation or not, could convince people to take action or to follow your directions. Because is the magical word, and copywriters should know how to use it as a conversion tool. So how powerful is the word because? Let's refer back to a classic study done by the psychologist Ellen Langer in the year 1977. The study is professionally called The Mindlessness of Ostensibly Thoughtful Action, The Role of Placebic Information in Interpersonal Interaction. Now, we copywriters know this study less formally as the copy machine study. During this study, a researcher would spot someone waiting at a library copy machine. The researcher would walk over with the intention of cutting the person in line. They would look at the innocent bystander and use one of these three following versions of a similar question. Version 1. Excuse me, I have five pages, can I use a Xerox machine? Version 2. Excuse me, I have five pages, may I use a Xerox machine because I'm in a rush? Version 3. 
Excuse me, I have five pages. May I use a Xerox machine? Because I have to make some copies. Now, you're not alone in thinking that version 3 sounds absolutely ridiculous. Everyone waiting for the photocopier needs to make copies. Surprisingly, version 3 still worked out in the researcher's favor. 94% of people in the study allowed the researcher to cut in line after they used version 2. This is probably because they had a legitimate excuse of being in a rush. But a whopping 93% of people in this study allowed the researcher to cut in line after they used version 3. And if you're wondering what the other number was, only 60% of people allowed the researcher to cut in line after they used version 1, which gave no reason at all. So what does this study teach us? By even just attempting to justify your actions, people are more willing to oblige. A simple because encourages people to hear you out. In the copywriting world, where it's challenging to get people to read your ads or skim through your marketing copy in the first place, it's important to use these strategies to get people to hear you out. The copy machine study asked people to passively let another person use the copy machine before them, donate money or order services, but your because statements need to be even more powerful. Now, I'm not saying you have to add the word because to every sentence that you write for the next 15 years, but you can use the lessons from the copy machine study to form a better argument when you're writing convincing copy. Now, one of the last things I want to share with you is white space. And white space is simply keeping it simple. That message, just three words, tells you all you need to know about this next section. Why? The designers, web developers, and clients that you all work with, they want white space. If your copy drags on and on, you will take up more white space with your words. More importantly, if your copy drags on and on, your readers will lose interest. White space, or the unused white space surrounding copy or a design, is more important than you might actually think. White space makes every word more impactful. If you see a landing page with only one word on it, you're probably going to read that word. If you see a landing page that looks like a research paper, you might not even read it. Now, of course, you're not always going to have the control over a landing page's design. Your client might work with you with different designers, developers, and other marketers to decide upon what they want, but you can help everyone out by creating simple, impactful copy that doesn't require too much space. Just try to keep things simple. So how do you keep things simple? Well, number one, understand your client. What does your client want their audience to do? Can you simplify the message into less words, three words maybe, maybe even one? If you do not fully understand your client or their audience, you're more than likely going to find yourself grabbing at straws and stuffing messages into your copy that isn't relevant. Number two, you can talk to your client. Communicating with any client is necessary for success. Try to go beyond the message and where is the copy going to? How will it be sent to customers? How many words is your client expecting? And what does the customer already know when they see this copy? All of this information will again equip you with the knowledge that you need to craft copy that easily goes into an email campaign, a landing page, or wherever the copy may be sent. Number three, I recommend look at your sentence and paragraph structure. So here's an example of two ways that you can approach your copy. Already, you might be able to see which one is more effective. Number one, White space and copywriting at large isn't just about the choice of words that you add to your copy. See how effective white space can be? The approach is much more refreshing. You can read the second version and know exactly what the first message was trying to say, in way less words. Your brain has more space to pause and think. The message is easier to retain, and that's your entire goal as a copywriter, isn't it? To communicate a message that your readers will remember. So, consider how you are splitting up your paragraphs. Are you forcing the reader to look at a 10 paragraph message without any pause or room to breathe? Or are you using white space to your advantage? Adding headlines can also add white space to your copy and maybe organize your message in a little better way that's easier to read and digest. Number four, you can ask yourself about each word. A concise message can be whittled down word by word. Read over your copy. How does each word contribute to the message? You can probably eliminate filler words or repetitive words. Here's an example. He went alone on this soul journey towards his dream. In this sentence, alone and soul, they mean the same thing, so you can get rid of one of them. Here's another example. The alarm clock continued to ring over and over again. Now, continued and over and over again both mean that the alarm clock kept ringing. You can get rid of over and over again and cut your word count in half. This leaves room for more impactful language. Different types of writing will call for more poetic or rhythmic language. And if your client is looking for that type of flow, they should tell you that ahead of time. Understanding your client is the first step in writing concise copy. If you only remember one thing from this guide, remember, keep it simple. My last lesson for you is to use basic language. 
So here we go. A homo sapien with an XY chromosome and his biologically female counterpart ascended a landform that extends above its surrounding terrain in order to fill a cylindrical shipping container with a capacity of about 3 to 50 liters of H2O. <laughs> Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. A concise, powerful message is the key to writing good copy. We can't discuss concise copy without discussing the importance of speaking your customer's language. If your customers speak English, take things one step further. Use basic English. Your clients and you have a specialty. A dentist, for example, has spent years studying and working in the dental health industry. Her customers, however, might not know the difference between a canine and a molar. Clogging up your message with industry jargon may not be a big deal to your client, but it turns off customers. Does the average new customer know that they need a fluoride treatment for their bicuspids twice a year? No. Are they looking for someone to clean their teeth? Yes. These messages are essentially the same, but you should choose the one that speaks to the customers you want to reach. Speaking your customer's language isn't just about technicalities or writing a concise message. Social proof is one of the most powerful tools in a marketer's toolkit. If people see that their friends, family, colleagues, or favorite celebrities are endorsing a product, they are more likely to buy it. Because when you speak your customer's language, they are more likely to feel comfortable with your message, as if they're talking to a friend. This idea ties back to the distinction of features and benefits that I described earlier. Let's revisit one of those examples. This vacuum cleaner has a 2000 kilowatt hour motor. This means you can quickly and effectively clean your whole house. Do you know what a 2000 kilowatt hour motor is? I sure don't. Neither does the guy who's walking through Costco for a new vacuum cleaner. Does the vacuum next to it have a 1000 kilowatt hour motor? Is 2000 kilowatt hour worth the $200 for the vacuum? This feature doesn't speak to the customer's language. So you'll need to break down why this feature is a benefit in the first place. If you told the customer that the motor has twice the power of the average vacuum, then your customer understands what it actually means. In fact, you may not even have noticed that 2000 kilowatt hours is actually false. A true number for a vacuum would be like 2 kilowatt hours or 2000 watt hours, but not both. Here's another example from the benefits versus features section. This phone's battery capability is 4000 milliamp hours, so you get two day battery life. What's milliamp hours? The college student who wants to buy a phone and browse social media probably doesn't know, but they do understand the benefit of having two full days of battery life. That speaks to their language. That's the key question you should take with you as you write copy. How would your ideal customer describe the features and benefits of the product that you're advertising? How would they tell it to a friend? What jargon would they know and what would they not be able to define? Answering some of these questions can greatly help you as a copywriter. And if you're not sure, you need to go back and do some more research on your audience. Talk to your client, read media that your customers consume, hold focus groups if you need to. The research part of copywriting is one of the biggest parts. So, as a review of this long video, number one, copywriting is a skill of using words to convince people to do things that you want them to do. Number two, the most important part of copywriting is the research. You need to match a product to an audience. Number three, when selling a product, benefits to the user are more appetizing than features of a product. Number four, information gaps can hold attention for a lot longer than you think. Number five, using the word because can add authority to your work. Number six, adding white space is a high return, easy way to increase the value of your copy. And lastly, number seven, keeping things simple is almost always better. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in pursuing copywriting as a career, I am currently launching a program called the 30 Day Brain Bootcamp, where I teach students to become more productive, improve their social skills, and eventually master their confidence. But copywriting aside, students also get access to my past courses for free, including the 10 module mega course, Psychology of Selling, and a course called Copywriting Kit, which has literally helped some of the students get full-time gigs as online copywriters. If you're interested to see what else there is, like me mailing three of my books to you, and the opportunity to participate in some group challenges, check out the link in the description below to learn more. Oh yeah, there's also a 30-day risk-free trial. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you learned something in this mega copywriting tutorial. If you choose to pursue copywriting as a career, good luck.